Hey everyone! So, microcontrollers are fun and all, but after watching Ben Heck's episode about making the Glue Logic robot, I figured I'd take a crack at something similar my, uh, myself, which also goes hand in hand with the challenge I like to give myself every time I build something using a microcontroller, to then try and build it again without the microcontroller using just in circuit logic. And that's what this little guy here is. It's a combination of four timers and two logic gates and the uh, L293 motor driver chip. So here you can get a pretty good view at all the gates involved and the ICs involved. And I guess the kind of the forewarning here would be that working with just pure in-circuit logic is rewarding, but it also gets very messy really quickly. And all these wires might seem a little intimidating at first, but once you get an idea of how it actually works, it's really not that bad. Start out with it's got the two infrared sensors here that kind of act like a switch whenever something gets too close. And they are normally high with their output, so if something's not blocking their way, they output a 1. And if something gets too close, they go to a 0. And those inputs go to the two 555s five, five, right here. And those are triggered by a falling edge, meaning when the trigger pin detects a switch from 1 to 0, the output goes from 0 to 1. And those outputs pass through diodes here to a little inverter junction, which I got on paper here. It's just a little combination circuit that takes one input and creates two outputs. Truth table here is zero, one zero, one, zero one. And it does this with the input going to the base of an NPN transistor with the emitter held to ground and the base and the collector is held high with a 10k resistor. And the first output is sampled here, and this also connects to an inverter where the second output is sampled on the other side. And this is necessary because you can only have one of the two inputs on each side of the motor driver active at one time, because if you put a one on both, you're going to fry it. And this simplifies the control of it, because you got two sides of a robot that's only two inputs, and you need to get four outputs from that. So what that does is it either makes the motors go forward or backwards, and you can have the four combinations depending on if each side is given a zero or a one, forward, backwards, turning left, turning right. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, consider leaving a like and a subscription, or heading over to Thingiverse and downloading the robot chassis here yourself. It works great for any project that will fit on the surface area, and it's designed around the common smart car motors you find on Amazon. You might be watching this from Thingiverse right now. See ya!